I was asked by a friend to make a bowl as a present, so she visited us and had a look through my bowl collection that's drying, and she chose one. So now I'm gonna take it and make it into something. The bowl she chose is made out of ash wood and about one year old, so it should be dry enough. Unfortunately, the bowl cracked a little bit right here where the pith was because it was still in the bowl while it was drying. So what I want to do now is to mount it in a lathe and turn down the crack, but then I will lose a little bit of the height of the bowl. So what I want to do to fix this then is to add a segmented ring on top and then the bowl will stay the same size. First of all I need to turn the bowl around again. The mortise for the chuck wasn't round anymore as well, but its shape was still good enough to just put the chuck back in. The bowl was really deformed, but very well balanced. is a nice surface but I still have the crack here and the pith and there's also another crack that I want to turn down a little bit and unfortunately this crack goes all the way through the bowl so I have to turn it at least down to here. The turning preparation is done and I have a about 24 centimeter outer diameter. Now I have to make the segmented circle that goes around the rim here but the question is how I have to size the segments to get a circle that's the right diameter. The easy way to figure this out is to draw it in SketchUp or any other kind of CAD program and just take the measurements off of there. But you can also calculate it. Let me show you how. I got this drawing and the two formulas that I need from Wikipedia and we need to figure out this distance here. That's one segment. We know that the radius is 12 centimeters and we know the angle because I want to make a 12 segmented circle so the angle is 30 degrees and now I just have to put these two numbers into the formula and calculate it so S equals twice the radius so 24 centimeters times the half of 30 degrees 15 degrees and the calculator tells me that a segment is 6.2 centimeters long. With this dimension the segmented circle would then end up like this. But the problem here is there are all these gaps and I would lose this thickness of the bowl. That's not ideal. I need a segmented circle that's like this without the gaps. In order to calculate this I need this distance here and add it to the known radius and then calculate the new segment and then I will end up with a circle this big. And again I just put the numbers into the formula to calculate H and it tells me 0.4 centimeters roughly. So now I add this to the radius so the new radius is then 12.4 centimeters now I just take the angle and the new radius and put it again in this formula and I will get the new segment. And for the new segment I got roughly 6.4 centimeters and that's the measurement I need to use. And a quick look on the stencil I made. Yeah, about 6.4. Perfect. And the width of the segments is easy, I just take the bowl thickness right now. And the wood I want to use for this ring is the single piece of teak I have. I only have this one piece and I wouldn't use it for any other project, so good for a segmented ring on a bowl. I prepared the rough lumber by first jointing one face and one edge. Then I set the bandsaw fence to the thinnest part of the piece of wood to rip it. I used the bandsaw here because my table saw sucks at doing heavy work and would burn more than cut. The bandsaw just walks through there like butter. Then planing the bandsaw cut and ripping the other edge on the table saw. 
As you can see I want to make this segmented ring pretty tall. If it's too tall I can always turn it down later on. So now I just have to chop them into the individual pieces with 15 degrees and a length of 6.4 centimeters that we calculated earlier. Therefore I have to set up an auxiliary fence at exactly 15 degrees on my table saw slat. Now the easy way to cut this would be to just put it here, cut it, flip it around, cut, flip around, cut and so on. But I can do this because I have sap wood on this side and hardwood on this side. So what I am going to do now is to first chop these into normal pieces and after that I cut the angles. I wanted to keep the grain as much as possible in the ring, so I laid it out as a whole board again. And now I'm gonna cut each piece individually on the miter slat. And I also set up a toggle clamp to hold down the piece while I'm cutting it. Now I need to cut the other bevel and I mark the exact length on one piece and I'm going to use this to set up a stop block for all the other pieces. Luckily my first attempt on setting the stop block was perfect. All angles are cut, now let's see how we did. There's a gap. And there's a gap, so definitely not perfect, but I can fix it when I glue it together. I used a method where you only glue up two halves and shim in between those halves, and then you can send the halves parallel to each other. I can already tell that my calculations for the ring were correct, because there's wood overlapping all around the bowl, and on the inside as well. Now I can sand the two mating surfaces parallel on the disc sander and I rigged up this here so the piece won't get shot upwards because of the disc spinning this way and just prevents it from that. The pieces now fit together with no gaps. Next I have to glue these two pieces together and therefore the mating surfaces again need to be perfectly flat and parallel to each other and I again do this with the disc sander. This time I needed access to the whole disc so I had to dismantle my sander a little bit. I was a little bit scared of doing this because you hold this big piece with no support at all against a really fast spinning disc and so far I only had it seen in other YouTube videos but in hindsight I can tell there's nothing to fear. Then some glue and clamps, which in this case is a board clamped over the bowl from two sides. And this provides enough clamping pressure. All that's left to do now is turning this bowl.
Our big problem with turning a bowl this big on a lathe this small is that the tool rest is so short and I just can't reach to the center really well. It's really difficult to turn here and to get a smooth surface at the same time. I really need a bigger lathe or at least a longer tool rest. I should build one someday. Sanding is so exciting. I'm really happy with how this bowl turned out and I think this isn't too bad for my first segmented bowl and I really like the color of the teak wood and especially the color changing it does. <laughs> 